I'm Mike Hollingsworth, training captain for Clark County Training Division. This video presentation will be over the start triage system. Start triage is the adopted system that Clark County uses during an MCI or mass casualty. The Clark County Operations Chief have recently adopted a new plan for Clark County. Soon that will also be regionalized. It will encompass the Southwest Washington Region 4 area as well. This presentation, however, will only cover the start triage, the initial triage system, and the alarm levels briefly that uh, are included in that plan. More of the plan will come out um, probably later this quarter, uh, if not fourth quarter of 2011. So START. START stands for Simple Triage and Rapid Treatment. This should ideally be done in less than 30 seconds per patient. More times than not, however, it will probably take you only about 15 seconds or less per patient to triage. A video that you will see later uh, shows a one individual triaging uh, six patients in under three minutes. The goal of triage is to do the most good with the most people with the limited amount of resources. That's different than what we do on a day-to-day -day basis as uh, first responders, where we do the most good for every patient. In fact, we expend and throw whatever resources we need uh, to accomplish that goal. We may spend four or five uh, individuals, if not companies, um, on one car accident with two or three people that cannot be done, however, and obviously during an MCI. Treatment during a triage, therefore, is very limited. We are not resuscitating patients during a mass casualty incident. We're only trying to accomplish usually three things, three basic things. To open up an airway, to stop major bleeding, and maybe to elevate an extremity to uh, reduce that hemorrhage no resuscitation efforts are performed. The color-coded system that we use in Clark County uh, is done initially with triage tape and more of that to come in another video on the actual kit itself but our triage system that we use here in Clark County the first wave of triage will be done using surveyors tape for the most part, color-coded tape. And then as they come through a funnel point, those patients will be relabeled with actual triage tags. More of that to come in other videos at another time of the year when we get closer to actual uh, uh, scenario-based demonstrations. So, color coding. Green is the does, uh, set aside for the walking wounded uh, or to identify a uh, ambulatory minor need patient. Yellow is for the non-ambulatory or delayed patients, delayed care patients that will usually survive uh, more than 12 hours without care. Red will be for the immediate or critical patient and black is for the dead or non-salvageable. Uh, that could be a, an entrapped uh, individual that uh, would require a lot of resources. An example of that would say be a train derailment where you might have people trapped and entangled in debris that cannot easily be extracted or extricated but um, uh, if you tag them red, for example, you would expend a, a horrific amount of resources to get those individuals out, 
so that individual may either be tagged <clears throat> black or more appropriately either green or yellow get the reds out first that can be easily removed <clears throat> so let's begin with step one of triage <clears throat> step one is done <clears throat> as you pull, uh, arrive on scene and that's the windshield survey so as an officer as on an engine company before your seat ever leaves the officer's seat you would declare an MCI based on what you see you would order additional resources and for Clark County that would now be uh, alarm levels an example of alarm level uh, through the ITAC system is uh, alarm level one would be three to five patients and it would be clearly denoted uh, what you would expect as far as resources in that first alarm um, you would also want to assign or delegate positions trying to maintain the span of control of five to seven um, during during this MCI and try to keep in line with the uh, ICS plan the officer or um, individual doing triage might initially just get on a PA system and say uh, everyone who can walk come over here and the idea is to get the walking wounded moving to you so you can do a uh, initial triage of the green patients get them away from the field keep them uh, sequestered over to an area treatment spot where they're not going to wander back into the field where they need to be managed again <clears throat> step two would be therefore to go out and triage those that didn't come to you the first step is to assess respiratory rate or the respirations if they're not breathing therefore you would need to open up an airway if they begin breathing uh, you cannot get any more critical than that uh, you would tag them red and you would move to the next patient you can utilize some of the basic supplies that are found um, in the uh, STK STKS kits that are uh, going to be uh, uh, sent out to all first responding apparatus throughout the three agencies and they will be standardized and um, uh, in them will have a limited amount of supplies of hemorrhage control and OPAs you could place an OPA in this patient or have a bystander who is uninjured maybe help maintain the airway if the patient's airway is opened and they remain apneic, they're color coded black, and you move to the next patient. Step three, assess respiratory rate. So if they're if they're already have an airway and they're breathing, therefore, uh, we want to look at the criteria of a range: greater than 30, less than 10. Greater than 30, you tag them red. Less than 10 you tag them red. The idea here is, is not to uh, diagnose but to look for criteria. If you've got a 16 year old hysteric, uh, hysterical female your job is not to diagnose whether or not this is hyperventilation syndrome or if this truly is some uh, underlying cause that's causing this uh, respiratory rate to increase if it's between 30 but greater than 10 uh, you move to the next uh, assessment which is perfusion or circulation in the circulation you assess a radio pulse or check for cap refill it's your choice if there is a radio pulse or if the cap refill is two seconds or less you move on to mental status if it's not you tag him red for immediate and move to the next patient here you would maybe manage any serious hemorrhage control using maybe bulk dressing, pressure elevation, etc. The next step is mental status. So if they can follow a simple command like raise your hand, tell me your name, touch your nose with your hand, um, something along that line, uh, but they're non-ambulatory, 
you would now tag them yellow and move to the next patient. So if, they, if the criteria is that the respiratory effort is between 30 and 10, their perfusion is present where they have a radial or a cap refill within normal limits, and they follow uh, simple commands, you would tag them yellow. If they cannot follow simple commands, you would now tag them immediate or red. So as a summary, remember the RPM acronym. R for respiratory, P for perfusion, and M for mental status. Any failure of one of these criteria makes them a red or immediate patient. This concludes part one, and part two will be uh, a quick scenario exercise on triaging. Jeff Clean and Jeff Burstenberg, could you please come to the kitchen?